Okay, we've come to lesson four, and we've been talking about this ripple rooted in the feet, powered by the legs, directed by the waist, expressed by the hands. So, so what we're doing here, to make this a Tai Chi movement, it's rooted in the feet, powered by the legs. The waist is doing a little bit of directing, and we're just painting brushes with our hands here like this. So I'm feeling my whole body, it's my whole body's sense of uh, connection through my nervous system, my muscles, bones, and joints, and I'm letting that express out that way. And, you know, don't worry too much if you end up doing it this way or this way, or, you know, you could do it that way. Both palms can be out like this, or both palms can be in like this. There's a lot of different ways to do it. I'm mainly just suggesting that you let your body move your hands. And important, don't twist down here. Remember, this space stays the same. It does not collapse. So you're going back and forth like that. Um, another thing you can try is drawing circles. So here, I'm shifting my weight on the up and on the down. And it can go either way. I can do it this way, or I can do it the other way. But the, arm, the hands are just drawing easy circles. They can be bigger, but I'm not holding them tight. See here I'm drawing circles, but I'm holding my hands tight. I want them to be soft and relaxed. So there's this sense of a circle here, nice and easy. But the idea is you relax your hands. You can bounce up and down and do the paintbrushes vertically like that. Or you can go in Tai Chi, at least as I do it. Your hand is never moving all by itself. The whole body moves the hand or the hand doesn't move. Um, what you get sometimes when you do this, both when you're learning or if you're just doing a, maybe a different style, Sometimes you end up with what I would call coordinated local strength. Coordinated local strength is not bad, but it's local, meaning the hands are moving the hands or the arms moving the hand. It means that the movement is cut into segments. So watch this. This is me doing the same paintbrush, but I'm using coordinated local strength. And what that means is if I stop my body, I'm still doing this. So I'm doing this at the same time that I'm moving my body. Right? What I want to do instead is I want to connect through my center down into my legs so that my legs are moving my hands. So if my legs stop, my hands should just drift to a stop. They should not keep doing this because they're not doing it independently. I remember one time I was having a really difficult time learning a movement that was very similar to this one. And I asked my teacher, I said, Andy, is my hand moving at the same time my weight shifts? And he said, Gene, your hands are moving because your weight's shifting. And that was a big light bulb for me. The hand is moving because your weight's moving. It's not that it happens at the same time. This is one of my problems with every doing a whole giant movement all at once, follow the leader. You end up steering your body around and making it with a lot of local strength instead of feeling it from the ground up and it is expressed through the hands. So root, power, direction, expression and then you've got a Tai Chi movement. That's what makes it a Tai Chi movement. So just to review, once you're in your neutral, you've got to sink and make a little space there, rise up and bring the hands up and then soften, bring them in and down again. If you're doing it with breath, you would exhale on the sink, inhale on the rise, a little bit of pause between the breath, and then an exhale down into the sink, and you do it repeatedly that way. Then we have some paint brushes going side to side. We've widened our feet a little bit and just got used to moving the hands with the whole body. Right? Then we started making some circles. And the circles can be big or medium, but the important thing is that if you stop your body, your hands can kind of drift to a stop. It's your body that's moving the hands, not the hands moving the hands. But you can change the hand shapes, you can move them in different ways, but the important thing is that when you stop your body, your hands should stop too. You're moving your body with your hands, not moving your hands while you move your body. So here's me doing coordinated local strength. I'm just moving my hands around. If I stop my body, my hands are still doing this. If my hand comes up, it's because something was lifting it. If my hand comes down, it's because gravity's helping. So it's just a way to move from the inside out rather than from the outside in. So it's a nice way to dance or a nice way to move to music is to make sure that it's coming from the inside out, that you're not just doing this with force. I'm not saying that's a bad way to dance, but this is a nice Tai Chi way to do it, is that when you're moving, 
your body, your, you know, you can, you can just move your hand back and forth like this. But again, be careful. Anytime you're turning, anytime you're moving your, this core is doing this, watch out that you're not doing that. You should have neutral feet all the time. So you could do this one very slowly. You could just shift somewhere and just move your hand around a little bit. And just move somewhere else and do there. You can just shrug your shoulders. You can just do kind of a free form movement the important thing is that you don't twist your knees, that it's rooted in the feet, powered by the legs, directed by the waist, and expressed by the hands. So it, don't, you know, you have to be willing to look a little silly to do some of these things. Don't worry if it's stiff. And I had a student recently whose uh, partner told him his Tai Chi looked like a broken robot. Because <laughs> he was just getting started and they laughed. I mean, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a mean, it was just a little gentle rib. But it can feel like that. I, I felt like a broken robot for many, many months, trying to, you know, relax. But it's okay, you know, feel like a broken robot. Hey, you know, pretty soon you'll feel like a working robot, and then you'll start to feel more and more like a bunch of ropes, and then you'll feel like a bunch of snakes, and pretty soon they'll be naming a martial art after you. So keep it really soft and relaxed and let it move. So how this applies to daily life in the physical sense, man, you know, all the things we do with our hands, all the thing, all the work that we do. Try not to do things independently, so that you're doing this. If you're if you're chopping something, you know, feel it go through your whole body. Even just washing the dishes, um, anything that you're doing, driving, holding the handlebars. Sure, you want a certain amount of firmness. It's not like you want to just grip really ultra soft. But notice the amount that's necessary. How much do you need to hold that wheel in order to drive correctly? Hold it that amount. Many people grip the wheel way, way too tight. It creates a ripple of tension through their whole body. Try to keep it soft. Um, a nice simple exercise you can do if you're just watching television or something and you just want to play with this, if you're sitting, is you can just r gently rub your knee like that and try to keep the palm in connection to the skin the whole time. So you see your hand has to relax in order to go around it like that. Or if you're giving a back rub or something, let your hands shape around the shape of the... Like if I was rubbing John's shoulder, I could do like that. I don't want to grip or tight or have space in here. You want it to be, you can try it on different parts of your body and see if you can feel like your hand is just like a piece of silk that goes around it. It's just a way to soften and relax the hand so that they, you know, they aren't, they aren't so tight. Um, another principle that we have in Tai Chi is this idea of a dimmer switch, where we want our capacities on a dimmer so that we can go from really firm to really soft in every shade in the middle because we don't know what correction we're going to have to make next in our balance dance in life. We don't know what correction is going to make next. So we want to keep things really soft and relaxed. But the same softness here, this can also become very strong. It can become very powerful if it's relaxed along the way and then it firms at the last minute. If I hold it tight, I can only get a certain amount of power. If I take that same amount of power and go like that, the same basic power, but I've got this loose, relaxed whip snap at the end. I'm not <clears throat> tightening myself up. So this helps you at the soft end of the dimmer switch. The firm end of the dimmer switch is another story, but this helps the soft one. And this is a, this is a side of the switch that many, many modern people are very out of touch with. Their upper body, very, very tight and hard. We want to keep that really soft and loose. So that's a good way to do that. Um, also, on the internal level, your hands just affect how you hold things, how you, how you, I don't know, your grip on things. They can kind of symbolize the way you hold your life or the way you hold your vision. And again, the idea is to hold things more softly. Think of, think of the things that you feel like you really need to be happy. Um, if you're holding on tight to that, it has to come out just that way. If you relax your hold on it a little bit, you know, you can sort of say, well, I prefer it to go that way but it's all right for me to go another way. When you're, if an outcome has to be exactly a certain way for you to be happy, if your team has to win by a score of six to five, <laughs> then you're likely to be disappointed when you go to a game. But if your team has to win, then you're gonna be a little less likely to be disappointed. If you're going to see a game, <laughs> you're gonna be pretty, uh, you know, you're probably not gonna be disappointed if, uh, you know, if you keep your expectations reasonable. So it's just about softening our hold on things and just having a little more sensitivity, a little more uh, receptivity to things. That we can always go harder and stronger, but going soft and relaxed is a, is a challenge. So now we've basically covered that, um, that ripple. Rooted in the feet, powered by the legs, 
expressed by the way, uh, directed by the waist and expressed by the hands. All Tai Chi movements, the way I do it and the way I feel about it, all Tai Chi movements should have that. If the hand's coming up, there should be some kind of a rise. If the hand's coming down, there's some kind of a sink. The body always powers and absorbs the motions of energy to and from, not by itself, but connected. And it's connected through that springy legs down to that rooted foot. So now we've got root, power, direction, and expression. And now we're going to move to the next lesson where we'll talk a little bit more about opening and closing uh, within, within the body.